So here we're going to go over the image window and we're going to go over some of the controls that it has and the flexibility um, for you to work more efficiently. Now at the top you have your image bar. It has your file name, the percent of which you're zoomed in on, and what layer you're selected, and then your, um, your color depth. So you can see when I click on background, the background changes 8 bits per channel. It's a viewed at 100 percent. Now using the middle mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out, and you can see that the zoom gets larger or smaller. And another thing about this too is if you hold down the space while you're zoomed in, you can sort of pan around to different areas of your image that you're working on. Zooming out, you can also change the page size using control and the plus and minus. So if you hold down control or command, it'll get larger in the amount of 100 percent. So you can see we're at 400, 500, 3, 2, 1. Now you can also do this by doing control and alt or command and alt and the plus and minus. And that's going to actually change the scale of the page, like you could see here. So it's 200 percent, but it made the page larger too. 300, 200, 100, 66.7, 50. And so that just helps you to be a little more flexible while you're working on your image. Another thing you could do is use the navigator. And the navigator is a little bit of a mini representation of the image that you're working on. If you don't know where the navigator is located, it's under Window, Navigator, or you just pop open your palette. And you can see here that in the navigator, right now I'm looking at 100% of my image, so this red square goes around the entire image. Now if we happen to use our middle mouse wheel, actually zoom in, you can see that the square is changing. But inside here, you also see the little hand icon. You can drag this around and use the navigator to control your window as well, which is pretty flexible. You could also change your scale in here, making it larger or smaller, or hit the buttons and it drops it down to the next percent. Panel options. Basically the only option you have here is to change the color of the box. I'll leave it at red. Another thing, at the bottom of your document, you have these little tabs. Again, you have the percent that you're zoomed in or zoomed out on. You also have your document size and how much memory it's taking up in your RAM. So if we click on this, you can see it gives you the dimension of the document, the channels that you're using, and the resolution. If you click on the arrow, you can change these to display different things like your document profile, document dimensions, measurement scale, efficiency, current tool, so on and so forth. But it's just another thing to help you customize to your workflow. Now another cool thing about the image window is the full screen mode. Now there's basically two full screen modes and it's accessible by the F key. So by hitting F, your image will go full screen. You still have the ability to zoom, pan, use the navigator, and all that jazz. Now if you hit it again, it sort of goes in the expert mode where it's just the image and you're totally reliant on hotkeys and uh, again it does all the same thing. You could zoom, pan, whatever. Hitting F again takes you out of that mode. Also there's the new feature of the rotate canvas and it's a very handy feature that I do like. You can access that by the toolbar, this little hand with the rotation, or you could hit R and it brings up your icon. Now if you click and just drag left and right you can see that it's rotating your canvas. And in the options bar, it gives you the rotation angle, which you can edit that here. You could type in a number if you want, like 40, or 
You can rotate it here. You can have the reset view. So if you rotate it, hit reset, and it'll always snap you back to the proper rotation. If you hold down shift and drag, it'll rotate in increments of 15 degrees. Go ahead and reset your view, and it sets you back. And then reset your view. So another handy thing about the image window. Last but not least, let's go over the guides, the grid, and the ruler. So bring your ruler up. It's Command R or Control R. You can see that here's our page rulers. And dragging from either the top or the side, you get your guide. So setting up guides are pretty useful if you're laying things out and you want to space them out properly and all that jazz. Go ahead and set them up. And you could drag them wherever you want. Now if you mouse over these guys and you hold command, you can see that you get the little icon where you can edit where they are or adjust them. And if you're creating a new one, you could drag. And if you hold down Alt, we'll change the direction from horizontal to vertical. Now moving on to the grid, which is Control Quote or Command Quote, you can see that it brings up your grid. Now we set the size of our grid using our preferences earlier. If you ever want to go back to that and edit the size of your grid and all the settings for that, again, Control K, Units and Rulers, or Guides, Grid, and Slices. You can change the colors again, and your Smart Guides, your grid, you can set it however you'd like it. If you want to toggle all of your different guides, grids, rulers, whatnot, that would be command quote, hides your guides, command R, hides your rulers, and command quote, hides your grid. And uh, just a couple things that I wanted to go over that you can uh, help your workflow be a little more efficient. And at some point you're going to have to resize your image or resize your canvas, and you could do that by going to image, image size, canvas size, and then there's image rotation. So the image size, if we take a look at this dialog box here, we have our pixel dimensions and then our file size, and then your width and our height, and you could type in numbers here, and you could also change percent, pixels, or you can control this by the document size as well, by percent, inches, so on and so forth, and you could scale it down from there. Now you could scale the styles, which means if you have layer styles applied that they will scale down with the image and try to match the resolution. You have constrained proportions, which if you click this you'll see that our locks disappear. So you can scale it with a different aspect ratio or numbers to like squish it down. If we take a look there, you can see what that does. And then resample image is basically pixel interpolation, and we talked about that in the preferences. And that's pretty much the image size. Now the canvas size allows you to sort of crop the canvas. Again, you have your current size with your file size, your width and height, and your new size. So if you want your new size to be like 500, and you could make this relative, you could make it absolute or relative, and then the anchor, which means that it's going to crop towards a direction. So if you click this one, it's going to take the pixels from the bottom right corner and crop it to the top left corner. And then it'll say, hey, you're going to clip some of your image, is that cool? And then you say proceed, and so there you go, it's going to crop it from there. And then we have our canvas extension color. You could change this whatever you want. So if you're making your canvas size larger, you could say like a thousand by eight hundred from the center. You could see what that does. So then we also have our image rotation, which you could rotate it 180 degrees. 
flip canvas horizontal, flip canvas vertical, and so on and so forth. And then from there, we have our application window, which it's only on Mac OS X. And under Window, Application Frame, you'll see that Photoshop switches to the application frame and allows you to control the application windows and panels from within the image window. It's off by default, but to access that, it's Window, Application Frame. And that pretty much covers our image window.